your dreams are bigger, bolder, and more badass than the life you're living now, but something just keeps getting in the way. Join certified coach and former therapist Diane Wingert for the Driven Woman Podcast. She'll show you how to get rid of whatever is holding you back so you can stop spinning your wheels and up-level your life. Get ready to hop in and buckle up. This is the Driven Woman Podcast, and we're heading for the fast lane. Well, hey there, Driven Woman, and welcome back to the podcast. You know, I've been talking a lot about the amazing women that I met at She Podcasts Live Conference. Well, today is going to be no exception because today I bring you business strategist Krista Grasso. She has been around the online space for a while. I had heard of her before, but I had no idea how brilliant she was till I met her and spent time with her at the conference. You know, I have a tendency to make things more complicated. I have heard this all my life, and it's because I like to look deeply into things and to bring as much value as I possibly can. But that can inadvertently create complexity. Krista has an amazing method called the Lean Out Method. And what she does is help entrepreneurs eliminate the unnecessary noise, the unnecessary complexity in their business before they scale so that what they scale is simple, strategic, and sustainable. If you do not lean out your business before you scale, you will actually scale complexity. In fact, one of the amazing quotes in this interview from Krista is, scaling amplifies what you already have. So if you have unnecessary complexity, you're going to scale that. Literally mind blown. What this woman scratched on the back of a notepad over lunch while we were spending time together at the conference was so impressive to me. I literally decided on the spot that I need to hire her. And as of the week of this episode going live, I will be attending Krista's two day lean out and level up retreat. So you are going to be hearing a lot more from me later on this because I know for a fact it's going to transform my business. So what you're also going to hear in this value-packed interview is how to scale and still serve clients one-to-one. I had no idea that was even possible. How to know when you're ready to scale and more importantly, when you're not. How having a killer client fulfillment system will prevent buyer's remorse That's amazing. And she's going to be walking us through her CHUCK system, which stands for Cut, Hold, Change, and Keep. You are going to want to have a pen and paper handy because this one is full of value bombs. Are you ready? Me too. Let's do this. Well, this is an interview that I have been really looking forward to having because today's guest is someone I actually met in real life. Can you imagine? Krista Grasso and I met at the She Podcast Live conference in Scottsdale. You've been hearing me talk about that a little bit because it was such an amazing opportunity to connect with some of the most fabulous women I know, including this one. Krista Grasso is a strategic planning expert for online entrepreneurs, and her genius is getting all the extra stuff out of business so that it can become simple, streamlined, sustainable, and scalable. You can think of her as a business optimizer. Krista's got an amazing system that she created called the Lean Out Method, where she literally makes you get a lean business and a planner that goes with it, a podcast. She's got all the things. So we're going to get into all the details. But first, I think we probably need to do a little bit of explaining about the terms. Let's talk about what does it mean to systematize and scale. Let's go there first and take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. So you probably know scale has become one of the new buzzwords. Everybody hears scale and, you know, people are thinking I need to scale right away and let me scale this out and let me scale my business. And I am a scaling strategist. I think scaling is really important, but I also think there is a time and place for scaling and some really important things that you want to have in place first and some things you want to make sure you do not have in place when you are at that point that you want to scale your business. So one of the things that you want in place is systems. 
because systems really help you to simplify. They help you to streamline. They help you to do all of those lovely things that you said in the intro. And a system is just simply a documentation of what you do. So think of the steps, the process that you follow. Who does it? So the people itself, and if you today are wearing all the hats, think of what role actually does it, because in the future, maybe you have somebody else who can pick that up and do it for you, the different tools that you use, and the different strategies that you're going to use around it. And the reason why you want those systems is it helps you get repeatable and consistent results. And for you as the business owner, it allows you to get your time back when you start to build out your team because you now have that documented system that somebody else could pick up and follow and leverage in your business. So systems, really important part, and I think a catalyst for scaling your business. If you try to scale before you have your systems in place or without building systems alongside of it, you typically end up scaling a lot of noise and complexity and actually make it a lot harder for you to run a simple, sustainable and successful business. Mm, That makes so much sense. But, you know, I think a lot of people listening are creatives and passionate, multi-passionate, sometimes entrepreneurs, and they know they need more structure in their business, but they're probably throwing up in their mouth just a little bit when they hear all this talk about systems, because that sounds complicated. That sounds tedious. That sounds difficult. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't sound like how the way most creatives think. But you're absolutely right. I mean, you have a podcast, you have a wonderful podcast, and I have a podcast. And if it wasn't for the systems within that podcast, I probably wouldn't even be doing it by now. Because it's so effortful when you have to create something from scratch every single time. But the system means that you have everything in order so you don't have to rely on your memory and hopefully one day you don't have to do it. What would be an example of, let's say someone who is a entrepreneur, maybe a coach or consultant, and they're currently wearing all the hats themselves and they are wondering, do I even have any systems? Do I need them? What would be an example of where you might recommend someone start with creating systems to start to make their business more lean? Yeah. And so I think one of the most important and one of the best systems that you can put in place if you don't already have it today is a client fulfillment system. And if you're not sure what that is, right, you just get this new amazing client who signs on to work with you. You're all excited. Do you have things automated in place, systematized, so they automatically get an email with access to the learning portal if you have one of those? They automatically get all of the information that they need with the links to schedule their coaching sessions with you. If that's what they have, do you have a system in place so you know and they know exactly what to expect, when and how to schedule calls, um, when their contract with you starts and ends, any of the details that they need. A lot of times what happens whenever we invest in something new, especially if we invest in a program or a coach or something that's a little bit higher ticket, is we have buyer's remorse. Even if it's something that we really wanted, we have this moment afterwards of, should I really have spent money on that? I don't know if this was the right decision. Maybe I'm not ready right now. And you want to wow and have an amazing client experience from the second they make that decision. And so your client fulfillment system is one of the best systems that you can put in place, right? Not only are you sending them the emails to get them access, but maybe you send people a special gift. And so you have a system behind the scenes for you to remind you to send them a gift or order them something or send them something. And so anything you can do to improve your overall client experience is going to help you retain clients. It's going to help your clients have a better experience overall. And you also want your clients to have a consistent experience when they first start working with you so you can see what's working really well and what you can do to make that experience even better for new clients that join in the future. Mm -hmm. So that's just one of many examples but it's not restrictive. It's not meant to feel suffocating (laughs) to put the system in place or to have to follow the system. It's meant to make things really simple so you don't miss anything. And so your customer or your team or whoever knows exactly what's expected and what to do. And it's really straightforward. And I'm smiling because you You know exactly what you're doing because I just recently decided to start working with Krista. And in fact, I just signed up yesterday 
for an experience coming up with her. And within minutes, I got, you know, not only confirmation that you're in, but uh, the receipt and then a link and you're going to be sending me some. I mean, it's exactly what you just described. So I don't think I would have had buyer's remorse because it's you, but I can totally see how in that window where they've just made the purchase decision and, you know, your mind starts to wander and you start to think, wow, do I really have the money right now? Should I be doing this other thing? Am I ready? Can I handle this? Is this the right person? You immediately are coming in with reassurance, but it's not you. It's a system that you have put in place via these automated emails that just comes right in and takes care of that client on your behalf. Yeah. And before that, what did I do? Oh, I've got to send them an email. Oh, where's that link for me? I got to pull up Calendly to find the link to schedule the call so that I could send them the email. And it was all very me. It was scattered. It was, I've got to do this. Did I remember to send them everything? I've got to go look at this link to get this and I've got to go here. And until you put those systems in place, you're honestly just working a lot harder than you need to and making things more stressful than you need to on both yourself and your new client. (laughs) Oh, it's absolutely true. And I think, you know, those of us who are relying on our memory and our good intentions, that is very, very stressful. And sooner or later, you're going to drop the ball. You're going to make a mistake. And then you're going to be, a client is going to be saying, where's that thing? Weren't you going to be sending, you talked about during our coaching call, you, you promised me this homework. I haven't received it yet. Are you sending it to the right email? If you have that systematized, it's already on its way before they've even had a chance to look for it. Otherwise, it's all on you. And that that's a really good, a really good example of it. Do you find that most relatively new entrepreneurs are resistant to systematizing their business or they're eager to do so? It depends on the background, right? So those of us who grew up with a project management, very organization driven kind of love of system type approach, sometimes actually can systematize too early because it's just naturally something that they love to do. Most people resist it even when it's well past the point that they need to do it. And then they do it and say, why didn't I do this earlier? This is saving me so much time. They kick themselves for not doing it sooner. But I think the important thing is you want to systematize what you want to repeat. Mm. And when you're early on in business and you're first starting, you're trying a lot of different things to see what sticks, right? You've It's a classic spaghetti against the wall. See what sticks. See what you're going to keep doing. Once you try a whole bunch of things and you're like, you know what? Sending out my newsletter every single week on Thursdays at 10 a.m. is the prime time to send the newsletter. And when I structure it this way and I include this call to action, I get the best results. That's when you would create a system around it with some of those instructions for your VA or somebody to help you to create that newsletter. But when you're like, I'm going to try Monday and then I'm going to try Friday and I'm going to try this and maybe I'm going to include this in it and maybe I'm going to try this in it. There's no point in doing a system then because it's going to change so much and you don't know yet what you want to repeat and it's not giving you the results that you want yet. So when you have results, when you want something to repeat, that's the time to do the system and to document it. So you don't want to wait. I mean, you want to do it early, but you also don't want to do it when you're still very much in that state of experimentation. That totally makes sense, Krista, because I think when you're new, you don't know what's going to work. And you don't want to make a decision that something's working based on very little feedback. You want to actually repeat something enough times that you're like, oh, this is actually working, not just with this one person, but with multiple people. So I definitely want to put a system in place. Now, do you think people need to have a really good understanding of technology to be able to embrace systems? Because sometimes I have uh, recommended to clients that they need more systemization in their business. And they will, I'll get a little pushback because they feel like I'm not that tech savvy and I don't want to get into all these things. I'm like, no, we're talking about making things simpler, not more complicated. Does that come up with you and with the clients you serve? Yeah, it does. And when you think about a system, really all you need is a Google Doc and Loom. 
right? It's you need some way to be able to kind of capture what you're doing in a place to be able to capture steps. Now you can get more fancy. I've got a lot of my systems actually in monday.com, which is what I use for my project management software. Things that you do on repeat, like you mentioned the podcast. Mm -hmm. I have systems for both producing my podcast and for being a guest on podcasts. I put those in my project management software because those are things that we need to do on a schedule and we need to check off. And every week we need to make sure, did we post this then? Is the blog done? Is the newsletter done? Did it go up You know, on the various podcast platforms at the right time? Did we notify the guests and send them their links? And so because it's something that's part of our weekly and daily activities, we put that in our project management tool. But if it's something that's more something to reference, so for example, you have a new offer in your business, you leverage Kajabi and Active Campaign. I'll say, which is what I do. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking about, I'm getting ready to introduce a new offer. And you're thinking about all the steps in building the offer, making sure you've got a thank you page, making sure you've got a checkout page, making sure that people are getting put into whatever your email system is, and you're doing things like that. Well, those things I'd probably just put in a, a Google Doc or somewhere where you track and store all of that information that's easily accessible to you and your team because you do it less frequently. Mm. It's more of a one-off than next time you create an offer. You want to be able to go see those steps, but you don't necessarily need them in your day-to-day or weekly tracking space. No, that makes sense because if you're doing it every day, you're going to put it in your project management system. Do you think every solopreneur needs a project management system? I do. I truly do. And I think it can be simple. It doesn't need to be a complicated project management system. There's a lot of great free tools out there. I am personally a huge fan of Monday, but there's plenty of tools out there. But I think if we try to remember everything in our head, it ends up being just mentally taxing. It's mental clutter. It's not even so much that you can't remember it all. Although I would argue you hit a point where you can't possibly remember it all and you start to you know, drop balls as you're working, but you just want to have it down. You want to be able to visually look at what your priorities are so you could make decisions. And you want to clear that mental clutter so that you can actually think creatively And you can do the stuff that only you can do in your business, which you can't do and you can't even really do well if you're constantly thinking about, oh, at two o'clock, what's the thing I have at two o'clock? All right, I've got to do this and then I've got to go do this. And oh, I can't forget to do this because my newsletter goes out tomorrow. And if all that's rolling around in your head and you don't have it documented and tracked somewhere, that I think that you're just really impacting your creativity and innovation in the things that really align with your unique zone of genius and what makes you you in your business. Absolutely. The, I mean, I think everybody's heard the term by now, decision fatigue. And it's a real thing. Like just thinking, did I send that thing? When am I supposed to send that thing? Do, is, that a, is that a today thing or is that a tomorrow thing? Well, let me go look that up. What time did I send it last week? All of that, first of all, the likelihood that you're going to get completely sidetracked and not find your way back is very high, but it's all a strain and drain on your system. So the idea that you can follow the procedure, this is not to hem you in. This is not to limit you because I think a lot of people suspect that systems and routines and all of this structure is limiting, but I personally find it to be freeing, freeing of my creativity because that's what gets sacrificed when you're spinning your wheels, always trying to figure out what to do from one moment to the next. So I came a little late to that party thinking, oh, I'll just follow my passion. But, you know, your passion can send you to all kinds of places that really don't make you profitable or productive. So it's so much better to have a system. But I want to come back to the concept of scaling. I agree, Krista, literally everybody is talking scale, scale, scale. And I think you make a very good point about you can do it too early when you are not streamlined, strategic, and simplified. All you're going to do is scale the chaos and the confusion. But what would be some signs in your business? What do you look for uh, when you start working with someone that they are actually ready to scale? Is there like a psychological factor as well as a certain income level or level of complexity? What do you look for in determining when someone in their business are at the point where they are ready to scale? 
Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to start with a couple signs that you might not be ready to scale because the reverse is true of when you are ready to scale. So if you are at capacity, you are completely maxed out, you're like verge of burnout, just working so much and working so hard, and you feel like the hamster on the wheel, that is not the time that you want to scale. Because the thing is, scaling amplifies what you already have. And if you're overworked, you're overwhelmed, and you're feeling burnt out, scaling is going to make you feel more overworked, more overwhelmed, and more burnt out, which is not what you want. So I always look for somebody who has achieved, I call it capacity-based planning. So they understand how much they want to work. They build their schedule with intention. So they are focused on those things that are the really big, high leveraged activities that are going to get them, you know, the best results in their business. They're spending their time doing the things that most align with their unique strengths. And they've got a team around them, even if it's a single VA, but they have other people around them that are doing the things that are outside of their zone of genius so that they can stay focused on what is. So if you're like way overworked, just too much going on, you want to solve for that problem before you try to scale or you're going to amplify that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that comes with being just really maxed out from a time perspective is I always look at what is your maximum revenue potential for the particular offers that you have in your business and then for your business as a whole. And if you think about what it takes to deliver the offers that you have, there's time, there's technology, there's a lot of different facets that go into that. And so if you look at that and you calculate what is the maximum revenue potential, that will give you some indication as to whether or not what you have is scalable. And if what you have isn't scalable, you want to solve for that first so that you can scale it. And I'll give you an example. Let's say you work with clients Mm one-on-one and right now you are maxed out. You don't have an hour left on your calendar to take on any more clients, Mm -hmm. but you are not making the revenue that you want to make. So you think I want to scale because I want to increase my profitability. Great. Who doesn't want to scale and increase profitability if that was all it's going to take? but you can't scale with what you currently have because you're maxed out and you're at capacity. So you would have to really look at it and say, do I want to take what I do one-to-one and maybe add a group element? And that's one path. Or you might say, I love working with clients one-on-one. I don't want group. I want to keep one-on-one. Great. So what do you need to do to give yourself more revenue potential and more impact potential? And it might be restructuring how you work with people. Maybe you work with people for less time, but the same investment on their part. Maybe people invest twice as much for working with you in the same way. Maybe there's pieces that you do and you bring somebody else on that helps people with maybe accountability and support, whereas you do more strategy. Maybe you condense what took 90 days into a single day and do it in a VIP day or in some sort of accelerated package. There's a lot of different ways that you can look at it. But again, if scaling gives you more of what you already have, you want to make sure that what you have is something that you want to amplify. And so usually you want to make those changes first, whether it's looking at one-on-one and deciding, maybe I think I am ready to look at a one-to-many group offer or reimagining one-on-one to give you what you want and keep the pieces that really fuel you and get rid of the pieces that really drain you and aren't taking you closer to that place you want to be in your business. So it really makes sense that you are a scaling strategist, but your lean out method removes the complexity so that you can scale. Like you're not going to help someone scale a complicated, burdensome business because that's a quick path to burnout. So it's taking out the stuff that isn't working or, and we say not working. I think oftentimes business owners think something's working because they're used to doing it, or they think something's working because they're still enjoying it, or they think something's working because there is still a demand for it. But those things don't necessarily equal working, at least not from your framework. I mean, I think the concept of your maximum revenue potential for a particular offer, it's a very different way of looking at it than how most people do, which is, well, what are other people who offer something similar to me charging? In other words, the what the market will bear sort of, and you're like, no, that's not what we're doing. 
because you're missing the point if you're just trying to make your business like everyone else's business. It's like, what's different about you? What's unique about you? What is special about, I mean, you have the lean out method. Not everybody who calls themselves a business strategist has their own framework. So you can create predictable results because you created the system that gets those predictable results. But I don't think most of us know how to remove the complexity from our business. And with everyone sort of playing follow the leader and hearing scale, 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 and not realizing there's a lot of ways to scale. I mean, you've just talked about a couple of them. You don't have to scale by going from one to one to one to many. You can continue to work one-to-one and scale in a variety of different ways by leveraging what's really working and removing everything that isn't and repackaging your one-to-one offer in a totally new way. I don't know too many people that could figure that out on their own. We're too close to our stuff, you know? Hey, it's Diane. If this is your very first listen to the Driven Woman podcast, I want to thank you for joining us. And if you are one of my diehard fans who has been along from the very beginning, I especially want to thank you. This has been an amazing experience and I have learned so much from it. Just getting in front of the mic for the first time in my life and learning how to express myself in this medium to the amazing client success stories I've been able to share with you and the brilliant, badass female entrepreneurs, coaches, and consultants who have been my guest on the podcast. As we are finishing up our first one and a half years and episode 88, soon to be hitting 45,000 downloads, I have so much more I want to share with you, but I also know that listening to a podcast for most of us just isn't enough. So if you like this podcast, if you like what I have to say and how I say it, including the swearing, you like my guests, you like the client success stories, and you tell yourself, you know, one of these days it would be amazing to work with her. I want to let you know that big changes are happening behind the scenes and in front of the scenes at Diane Winger Coaching. And starting in 2022, I will be for the first time offering a group membership program because I have loved, loved, loved working with clients one-on-one and I will continue to do so on a more limited basis. But I have learned from my own experiences and from what people tell me they want that the power of group accountability is incredible. You can get guidance, support, and accountability from me, and I love providing it, but the power of a group really kind of 10Xs those results. It also makes the cost of coaching with an expert like me more accessible for more people, and I like the feel of that as well. So that is what's going to be happening, and changes will be coming along the line to the podcast as well. You're going to be hearing some new music. You're going to be seeing some different types of guests and different types of episodes. I don't know about you, but I get bored if I do the same thing over and over and over. So I want to keep it fresh, keep it interesting, keep it relevant, and keep it fun for all of us. So that's what you have to look forward to. If you want to know more about what's happening and want to be the first in line to be informed of new offers and opportunities, please make sure you get on my email list. You're just going to get an email once a week. You can unsubscribe whenever you like, but that's the best place to make sure you don't miss anything. Next best place to be connected is in my private Facebook group, The Driven Woman. Links to both of these are in the show notes. I invite you to connect more deeply with me than just listening to the podcast. I love my podcast listeners, but I don't know who you are. If you hop in the Facebook, we can get to know each other better. If you're on my email list, we will get to know each other better. And if you join my brand new membership program coming soon, we will definitely get to know each other better. I am looking forward to 2022. My intention is to grow and to blow my own mind while rocking other people's worlds. If you want to be a part of that, let me know. Links are in the show notes. I can't wait to connect with you. It's funny because at first I said I would never own my own practice. And now I own my own practice. And I would say, um, I'm never going to take it any more than just treating patients. (laughs) And now I'm thinking about um, how can I start my own um, institute. 
Yeah, exactly. Even like training other therapists, having a, a certification with my name that I am, you know, I haven't thought of the name yet, but I'm certified in this technique or whatever the case may be. And really just helping other therapists help their patients the way I help mine. Oh, it's so true. And that's the problem. And even when you think about in your business, right, it's you've done a lot of really amazing work that's gotten you to the point that you are today. And that's great. And you should celebrate and be grateful for the results that you've gotten. But when you think about where you want to go next, right, when you think about a year from today, and you're looking back at this year, and you've had the best year you've ever had in business. And what does that look like? The scary thing for people is you're probably not doing the same things that you did up until today. You're doing something different if you really want to have the best year you ever had in business because you've got to do something different. We all heard what got you here won't get you there. But I think we hear it so often that we don't really think about the fact that that means the way you have your offer structured the way you've priced your offers, the way you work with people, the things that you do on a day-to-day basis, the way your team is structured, all of those things got you to where you are today. But if they stay the same, are not going to get you to where you want to go next. And I think you really have to think about that and look and say, okay, well, what is going to get me to where I want to go next? Because sometimes it's not simply saying no to things that aren't working. Sometimes it's saying no to things that are working, but that aren't going to actually get you to where you want to go next. It is super challenging for people to do. And it's really hard to do without somebody to A, help you see it, but B, to help hold you accountable. Because I will tell you the most common thing that happens when I'm working with clients is we'll come up with this plan and they're like, oh, all right, this is, I, this is, I know this is the right thing to do. It makes me a little uncomfortable, but we're going to do this. And then a week later, the yeah, but start. Well, yeah, I mean, I know we're, but yeah, but. <laughs> and so as soon as the yeah, buts come, right, you're trying to talk yourself out of it because it's big and it's scary and it's a change and you're comfortable in what you've been doing. It got you to where you are today. And you don't know if that thing that you're going to do next is going to actually get you to where you want to go. And so the yeah, but start coming up. And that's where I do think it is so important to have somebody to not just help you see what needs to change, but to help hold you accountable and keep reminding you why you wanted to make that change. It's not about what they wanted you to do. It's you had a vision. These were the things you decided to do to make that vision a reality, reminding you of why you decided to do that and to see if that's still important to you. You know, I, I'm smiling broadly because the reality is that we hire coaches and consultants to help us know what we need to do to get to the next level. And we hire expert coaches and consultants like yourself because they have already done in their own business what you want to do in yours. And none of that matters when you actually have to take those first few steps because there's the intellectual part of your brain, the left prefrontal cortex, and then there's our lizard brain which is firing up all kinds of doubt and fear and terror and paranoia. And we immediately think this is the worst idea that we've ever had. This person that we've hired is certainly a demon, you know, and they're trying to lead us to the path of destruction. And it's like, no, don't do it. But I think you're absolutely right. It's the guidance, it's the support, and it's the accountability because if it were just a matter of figuring it out, I mean, there's no shortage of information in the world. We could probably teach ourselves almost anything that we might want to know, but actually taking the steps to move forward toward an uncertain future is hard to take alone. Like, it's why I hired you. It's why I'm going to work with you. Because as smart as I am and as experienced as I am, I'm also incredibly clever when it comes to coming up with excuses. I mean, they are so articulate and so persuasive. (laughs) If I wasn't working with somebody as smart as you, I could probably convince you that it's a terrible idea for me to lean out my business. And yet it isn't. And I think it's, you know, it ultimately comes back to transforming our relationship with fear and also trust. You know, like trusting that 
you don't want to transform my business for your sake. You want to transform my business for my sake, because you know what kind of freedom that will buy me. You have no vested interest in whether I do it or not. You're going to sleep tonight all the same. What difference does it make? But you know for a fact that makes a difference when you lean out your business and you do not scale complexity. And I think if left to our own devices, most of us would scale complexity and fall flat on our faces. I'm reminded of something when I first started learning about your work. You have an acronym for something. I'm I'm trying to remember what it is. Chuck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you want me to walk through Chuck because this is a really great way of assessing if you should keep or let something go in your business. Because I think I know, I'm very certain, it's we're releasing this in January, right? And I know that people who probably had all kinds of good ideas and good intentions, that they were going to plan everything out in December so they could start strong in January. Now, here we are, second week of January. Maybe it didn't happen. But if they could come away from this interview and think, okay, shit, 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 I should have done it already. It's okay. You didn't, you didn't. Okay, let it go. What can you start to do now to position yourself for 2022 being different, like something you can actually start working on today? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to walk you through the Chuck technique. But for the Chuck technique to be really effective, there's something that you want to do first. And that is you want to establish what I call your next level vision. Mm. And I think it is so important that we know where we're going. So we know if the things that we are doing are actually directionally correct or not. And so to me, a next level vision has three facets. Obviously, you're looking at your business and you're looking at your business in the future and saying, you know, what type of business do I want to have? What do I want to be known for? Who do I want to help? How do I want to help them? What, you know, what sort of transformation or results do I want to help my clients get? Then you're looking at yourself and what's important for you in your life and your lifestyle and how does that relate to your role in the business and how much you work in the business and how you structure your days. And then the piece that so many people I think are missing in a vision is your customer. Mm -hmm. So what is your customer of tomorrow want from you or need from you? Does the customer you have today grow and evolve with your business Mm -hmm. and you're continuing to grow and evolve your offers or have kind of back end essential model, ascension models where when they achieve a certain result, you have something else to help them take their transformation deeper? Or are you always working with a particular market like a startup market and you're just always going out and looking at new for new customers, right? That's going to have a big impact on your business model and how you structure things and what offers you have in your business and how you structure your offers. And so I think you want to get that clarity on your next level vision. And I usually tell people, look as far into the future as you can see. For some people, that's like decades. For other people, it's a few years. Whatever it is for you is fine. And then break that down to the next year. So this is my long-term vision. What do I want this next year to look like? A year from today, I'm looking back, as I mentioned earlier, most successful year I've ever had in business. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And I think you want to look across all three facets, not just what revenue did you generate in your business, but how much did you work to generate that revenue? Did you make time for the other things in your life that are important to you beside work? And I think you need to take all of that into consideration. And once you do, this is where Chuck comes in. Okay. And Chuck stands for cut, hold, change, or keep. And you want to run all of the different activities that you do in your business. You want to run all of the different offers that you have in your business. And you even want to run the components of your offers through cut, hold, change, or keep. And there's four different facets that I think you want to look at this through. The first is return on investment. Mm. Are you getting a good enough return for the financial, the time, or the energy investment you're putting into something? Sometimes what you'll find is, you know, I really love doing this. I do. I love the people I work with, but I am not getting enough of a financial and, you know, return Mm -hmm. based on the amount of time and energy I'm putting into this. Like I am putting way more in than I'm getting out. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I'm exhausted and I'm on the verge of burnout, right? That might not be something you want to cut. But that might be something that you want to change. And the change is probably going to come into your pricing, Mm -hmm. right? Or maybe even the way you have that offer structure. So that's your ROI. 
The second one is alignment. And this is really big. I mentioned sometimes mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. things you need to stop doing aren't just the things that aren't working, but is what you're doing aligned with the next level you're trying to go to? If you look at that vision of the future in your vision for the next year, if you keep doing it, is it going to take you there or is it going to keep you stuck right where you are or even prevent you from getting there? And that can be a tough one, but I think you do need to look at it through that lens as well. And then there's fulfillment. Do you like it? Is it still fuel you or does it drain you, right? Is it something that you wake up and you look at your calendar and you're like, yes, I'm working with this person today, or I'm so excited to do this coaching call today. Or are you like, oh God, it's Tuesday again. This is the day I have to work with clients, right? And so (laughs) you want to really look at, is it fulfilling? Because if you don't have that fulfillment for it, doesn't necessarily mean you need to cut it. You might want to, but it might mean that you need to reimagine it and it's time to. And then finally, investment. And I don't mean financial investment, but I mean more you're doing something today that you know is going to pay off in the future. Mm -hmm. Relationship building, spending time networking, really trying to build up relationships with people that you know in the future might really, A, help you just because it's really great to have great people around you and it might help you level up, but they might also be able to help either collaborate with you in the future or generate business as a referral partner. That's just an example. Mm -hmm. So I think you look at all the things in your business through, should you cut it? Should you place it on hold? Should you change it? Meaning it's working, it makes sense, but it's not delivering the results quite the way that you want. Or should you keep it? Meaning it's great, it's perfect exactly as is, nothing you need to worry about right now. And so I think this is such an incredibly valuable tool. And for those of you who have a team, it's really valuable to do with your team Mm. because sometimes your team will see things that you don't see. Often. Um, And it's a really great discussion. Often. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, often. Yeah, I definitely uh, need help with my blind spots. But thank you, Christopher, reminding me that before you can implement a system like Chuck, which is kind of like Marie Kondoing your business, like does it still bring me joy, you know, or does this need to go bring someone else joy? But envisioning what you want next first, because if you just start with what you've got, do I want to change it? Do I want to keep it? Do I want to, it's like, you're assuming that your business a year from now or three years from now or 10 years from now, whatever your timeline is, is going to be the exact same business serving people in the exact same way at the same price point. Basically, you're assuming that your current customers will be your future customers if you just go immediately to Chuck without first doing the future casting. And no wonder I missed that piece. And I just wanted to go right to Chuck because the future casting, the envisioning the future gives you permission to acknowledge if the business you have today isn't the business that you want to have a year from now, three years from now. It has to start with that because that's where your imagination and your creativity and your permission start. If you go right to the tools, you're just slicing and dicing the same business you already have, which is a perfect example of why exactly I needed you because I would have gone right to the slicing and dicing. I wouldn't have first, even in this conversation, it's exactly what I did. I wouldn't have first imagined to envision what I want for the future and then apply this technique. It's such a good reminder. Do you find that most of your other clients have difficulty giving themselves permission or even acknowledging there's a need to think about what they want before they start implementing changes and strategies and streamlining? Yes. And the other piece of that is sometimes what I find is there's a few different types of people as they set their vision. There's those who like set the wildest, most giant visions you've ever known, like the Elon Musk of the world, right? Or the, you know, Richard Branson's where they just have these really big visions and other people look at them and tell them they're crazy and they could care less. They're going after it. They kind of live in a place of vision. Mm -hmm. And for them, their challenge is probably getting the things done because they stay in the the vision place so much. But where most people are, is most people are in that place where they don't really let themselves create their vision or dream big enough. 
they really end up in a place where they were told that it's done a particular way in their industry, or they have to do it a particular way, or they followed some program that was very prescriptive and cookie cutter, and you have to do this, and then you have to do this, and then you have to do this. And so they just are conditioned to think that there is a certain way they have to structure and run their business and kind of a certain ladder by ladder, um, rung by rung approach that they need to follow. And none of that is true. There is never one way to run a business. There are countless ways to success. The only right way is the way that's right for you. And I think you do need to give yourself permission to actually release everything you've ever heard before and imagine what you want for your business. Imagine what you want for your life as it interrelates with your business and imagine the types of customers that you want to work with and how you want to be able to help them and ignore everything that you've ever been told because you can then again, kind of pull in the pieces that made sense and that support what you want. But if you start with what you've already been told, you're never going to really create that true vision that you want because you're going to pre-edit yourself down and put constraints on yourself that in reality don't exist. So, so that is literally a mic drop moment. And it comes back full, (laughs) full circle to what you said earlier is like scaling amplifies what you already have. If you've never given yourself permission to dream into the business you actually want, you're just going to amplify something that you don't love anymore. And it's, it's kind of a dirty little secret about entrepreneurship that I don't find a lot of people talk about is when you bust your ass to create a business that is successful by anyone's stretch of the imagination and you don't love it anymore and you just want to burn it to the ground and start, it's like, you know, as soon as I grow my hair for two years, I can't stop thinking about shaving my head. It's like, you know, and I think that's something we don't like to talk about, but you can be very grateful for the success you created, but the thought that you're going to keep on doing it in the way that you've been doing it is excruciating. This is a moment for a systematizing of your business, a leaning out of your business. Stop And don't go any further until you do that, because I think it's entirely possible to fall back in love with your business after you do that, instead of resenting it and trying to escape from it, which sadly, many people do. And they come to the conclusion that they were never meant to be an entrepreneur. And it's like, no, that wasn't the conclusion. It's just that you created something that doesn't serve you, may serve your clients, doesn't serve you. Where would you like people to find you online? Where would you like them to follow you? And please make sure you tell them about your fabulous podcast as well. Absolutely. So one of the very best places to connect with me is in my Facebook group. And in the group, you can get the template for Chuck that we talked about today to print out and use for your business. And so that's at leanoutmethod.com slash group. And you can find all the things at leanoutmethod.com, including my podcast, which is the Lean Out Your Business podcast. And you will even find me in that group because I recently joined myself. So, and I think they can also follow you on Instagram and all kinds of other places, but if they go to the group, that's where the action happens and you are quite active there. Anything else coming up that you want people to know about in the month of January? I do have a two-day retreat um, that really does help set you up with all of that clarity on what to keep, (laughs) what to cut, what to change, and really just help you step into that big, bold vision that you have and to really give yourself the space to think about and create that big, bold vision and then create the plan to actually make it a reality in the new year. So that's what I've got coming up in January that I'm really excited about. It's called the Lean Out Level Up Retreat. I will make sure that we have links to the Facebook group, to the retreat and all other things related to Krista. This was extremely helpful. I don't think I ever really made the connection between leaning out and scaling. I just keep hearing this siren song about scale, scale, scale and not wanting to do it and resisting it. And now I know why. It's because I have too much complexity and I don't want more of that. So I'm going the lean out method myself, and I'm sure that you will be coming back on the podcast after we've done that so we can tell everybody how it went. I'm excited to come back. Yay. 
You've been listening to the Driven Woman Podcast with Diane Wingert. Want more straight talk and strategy each week that will take you from spinning to winning? Don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast player so you won't miss a single episode. Then head on over to the Driven Woman free and private Facebook group community. See you there.